Hey, what's up guys? Tiger Flash here. And today uh, we're back for the video that long I waited about macOS Ventura on unsupported Macs. So for now the patch only support Macs from 2012 to 2017. So that of course includes the 2017 MacBook Air. But for now the Mac is not supported uh, for 2008 to 2012 models. So you'll have to wait to install macOS Ventura on those old models. So for now, only 2012 to 2017, or of course, if it's newer than 2017, then it's supported. But for 2008 to 2012, I'll do another video when the patch will be released for those Macs. But for now, if you have a 2012 to 2017 Mac, anything, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, iMac, it will be supported under the new OpenCore Legacy Patcher patch. So now some important information. So now it's pretty simple to do an installation without like uh, losing your data, just doing an update. I still recommend to do a backup on uh, under an hard drive to make sure that you won't lose your data if something uh, has to happen during the installation process or if you decide to do a clean install. So first of all, back all your data on an on a external hard drive and of course you'll need an unsupported Mac to be able to do the process. So uh, I recommend an SSD, but if you don't have an SSD, it will still work, but it will be slower. And I would also recommend eight gigabyte of RAM, but of course, if you have four, it will still work, but a bit slower. But if you have an SSD and four gigabytes of RAM, I still recommend the upgrade because it will work pretty well. And of course, you'll also need a USB key. So I recommend a USB 3.0 because it's faster, but if you only have a USB 2.0, it will get the job, the job done and it has to be 16 gigabytes or more. So 16, 32, something like this. And everything that is on the USB key will be lost during the process to so make sure you back it up. So now we're ready to start the process. So here, that's why I waited a few days to do the videos. Now it's almost two weeks since the macOS Ventura is, has been released. And as you can see, I've made some tests on several Macs and it's working pretty well on every single Macs I've tested. Some iMacs, some MacBook Pro Retinas, some 2012 Unibody MacBook Pros, and it's working pretty well. So of course, SSD is not needed, but it will work better. So that's why I waited because I wanted to make sure that the patcher was working well and it is. So I want to thank everybody that works on the patcher. So first of all, you'll have to install OpenCore Legacy Patcher. So of course, if you did it, did it last year with macOS Monterey, you probably already have OpenCore Legacy Patcher uh, on your Mac. Uh, if you do, just go into your application, open, open OpenCore Legacy Patcher and run the update. But now I assume that you don't have it. So go on Google and write OpenCore Patcher, press on it, and then you have to go on the GitHub page. So I'll put the link in the description, no problem here. And you have to click on the GitHub page. So now once you're on the GitHub page, you want to scroll down to the right and here it's written releases. And you have 0.5.1, so that's the current release, it will change. And now you want to go into opencorepatcher.gui.app.zip. So that's what you want to download. So click on it. And now it's going to download. I put it on the desktop and let's go download it. And now just wait a little bit. So the application will download. So now the application is downloaded. As you can see a zip file right here and you double click on it to open it. And now, as you can see, it's trying to extend it. And now you have here just behind it, open core legacy patcher. So what you want to do is open your finder, go into your application and drag open core legacy patcher into your application. So as you can see, I already have it, so I will just replace it. But if you don't already have it, it's going to work flawlessly and put, just put it into your application. So now you want to open open core legacy patcher, just double click on it. And as you can see here, it's verifying since it's the first time we're opening the application. And if you're having trouble opening it, you can just do a right click and then open open core legacy patcher. It's going to come like force the application to open. And now we press open and now we're in it. So as you can see, the application is open and now we're ready to prepare the USB key. 
So first of all, you'll need a 16 gigabyte USB key and insert it in the computer. Once this is done, the, clear is, the, the USB key will appear. And now you have to make sure that nothing is on the USB key because we're gonna format it. So to format the USB key, we're gonna go into disk utility. So now I'm using Spotlight and I'm going into U disk utility. So as you can see right here, disk utility, sorry, my computer is in French. That's because I use French for first language. And there you go, you click on disk utility. And now as you can see, disk utility. So you wanna go here on the high row and go show all devices. And now we see all the device and if you go into external, you can see your USB key. So here you can see it's a Lexar USB key. So when you click on it, you click on the first one, the first up. And now you go into erase and you wanna erase your USB key and format is Mac OS extended journal. And you have to change also the scheme to uh, GUID. So partition GUID, just like this. And here you wanna erase the USB key. So now it's going to take a while. Of course, everything will be lost on the USB key. And as you can see, it's going to progress and you have a little uh, green flag. So it's going to work and the USB key will be ready to be used by the patcher. Now it is done. So now you can quit disk utility and continue to use the patcher. So once this is done, you want to create macOS installer. So we'll create, you will click on macOS installer just like this. And once this is done, of course, you don't have the version on your computer. So you want to download macOS installer. So now it's going to look on the internet to find a version of macOS. So now you can see macOS 11, Big Sur, macOS 12, macOS Monterey, and macOS 13, which is macOS Ventura. So here you want to click on macOS 13. So now it's 13.0, but of course it's going to change 13.1, 13.2, etc. And you want to click on 13, the version of macOS Ventura. And now it's downloading macOS Ventura directly from the internet. So this is pretty cool. It's directly from the Apple website. It's going to take a while depending on your internet connection. And once it's done, it's going to ask for your password. So just enter your password. It's the administrator password of the computer. And now it's going to uh, try to put install macOS Ventura into your application folder. So it's loading right here, as you can see. And once the loading will be done, it will be into your application folder, which is pretty neat because that's what you want to, of course, create your install media on your USB key later on. So now you wait a little bit. And as you can see, finish extracting to application folder. So as you can see right here, I've opened the application and you can see install macOS Ventura, which is what you want. And now you want to flash the installer and it's going to look into your folders if there is already an installer. And of course there is because you just download it. So as you can see here, you have install macOS Ventura and it's going to say that you need a 14 gigabyte plus USB key. You click on it. And now you want to just enter your password again. It's the, again, the administrator password and you press on enter. And now it's going to try, it's going to start to write everything that's in install macOS Ventura onto your USB key. So now it's going to take a while, depending on if you're using a Thunderbolt drive or if you're using a slower USB key, uh, you're going to take like 30 to 45 minutes. So if you have an, uh, an error here, which has occurred to me in some installations, you'll just want to format the USB key again and uh, re restart the application open core legacy patcher and often the trick will be done. If it's not, you can always reboot your computer and try again and in every time it has fixed it, to me, for me at least. So now it's done, it's installed on the USB key and you have to install open core to the USB key. So you press here, install open core to disk and you wanna install to disk right here. And now it's installing open core and you have a choice to do. So as you can see, there is your internal hard drive with for me it's 500 gigabytes and you have your external, which is for me disk three. It can be disk like two or four for you, but it's the USB flash drive. As you can see, fixed 15.6 gigabyte. And of course you want to choose this and you want to choose the EFI partition, which you have no choice to do. And now you will enter your password. It's again, the administrator password. So once this is done, it's going to install open core to the USB key. So you will be able to boot from the USB key, which is the next step. So now you want to reboot your computer and you want to press here to reboot. 
And now, once the computer will be rebooted, you have to press the Option key or Alt, depending on the keyboard that you're using. If you're using a US or Canadian keyboard or a French keyboard, it's not the same. But for most people, it's gonna be Option. So you wanna press and hold down the Option key while the computer is starting, and you wanna hold it down until you see all the choices uh, that will be on the screen. So now you hold it down, and as you can see here, a lot of options. So once you have all of those options, you have to choose EFI boot. So uh, nine times out of 10, it's not the EFI boot that you're already on it. So if you start on an EFI boot, you choose the other one. And like for me, it was the one with the yellow hard drive, but for you, it can be the black hard drive, depends. And if you make a mistake and it's not the good one, it's gonna just boot into your existing macOS, for example, macOS Monterey, and you just try it again with holding down the option key and you choose the good one, which is the other one, you know? But for most people, the EFI that you're on it is not the one that you want. So you wanna scroll down with the arrow and press enter on the other one. And now you wanna choose install macOS Ventura. So that is always the same thing. Sorry, we're not seeing really well. I cannot screen record while I'm doing upgrades to the computer. I'm sorry for that. So now you press enter and it's gonna to start to install macOS Ventura. So now it's starting the computer from the USB key to be able to install macOS Ventura to the hard drive. So as you can see here, we're here uh, in the, the recuperation and uh, you have a few choices. So you can install macOS Ventura. If you go straight up to install macOS Ventura, you're basically doing an upgrade. You keep all your data on your computer and you just install macOS Ventura. So this is what I recommend for most folks out of there out there. But if you see that there's an issue, like you try to do it, but it doesn't work for some reason and you're stuck and your, your computer doesn't want to install it, then I would go into disk utility first and I would erase all the, da the data on the computer that's on the hard drive by erasing the hard drive. Again, you do here show all devices and you want to go here to the first one in internal and of course you erase it in APFS. So, it's the good partition is already there when you press on erase. But that's not what I'm gonna do here, but I would recommend it if your computer is like uh, a lot of things on it and not working, or if the update process is not working properly, I'd re recommend restarting it and doing this. So now I'm pressing on install macOS Ventura, let's go continue and here accept, and how you choose the internal uh, hard drive of the computer. For, for me, it's macOS SSD 500 gigabytes, so I'm pressing on it and I'm going to continue. So here it was locked under password. So I'll just insert the administrator password. So it's not always locked and you unlock it and then you continue. So as you can see, I'm pressing continue. Okay. And now the installation is starting. So macOS Ventura is installing from the USB key to the computer. So uh, I'll be right back when the installation will be finished. And also, the computer can and will shut down and start back up during the installation process. And you will see all the choices on the screen, but it will always pick the right one. So you don't have to touch anything until it's finished. Okay, now it's finished. It took around an hour and you can choose like your region and everything. And uh, if, for example, a problem would have occurred, I would, of course, like I said, advise to do a clean install by going into disk utility and erasing your main hard drive into APFS format. Of course, back it all up before, and that fixed basically every every problem I had that has always happened. So as you can see here, it's APFS, and it's a uh, partition uh, GUID, as you can see. So right here, you can start basically your normal installation process, and it's gonna work like a brand new Mac. So of course the, 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 like the 10 first minutes is gonna be a bit slow because it has to do uh, like an indexing of all the things that's on the computer, but after it's gonna go work pretty well. So first of all, when you enter your password, let the computer work and open core legacy patcher will start automatically. So you won't even have to start it. And as you can see here, it's open. And it detects that I'm booting from the USB key because we're not on the hard drive. Maybe that's why it's slow for now because we're booting from the USB key and you wanna boot from the hard drive. So you press continue and you wanna to install to disk. As you can see, it's building open core to disk. So now it's installing open core 
and now you want to choose your hard drive so here's for me it's disk zero and the blue one is the one you're booting from so here disk zero and here fi and then it's going to ask for your password enter your password as we can see it's working flawlessly and now it's building open core onto the hard drive so just wait a little bit and it's gonna do it uh, for you so it's a bit of building everything you need for a flawless installation and now you have to reboot to apply and you reboot again so now you have to reboot the computer so once again for one last time you have to hold the option key uh, while the computer is rebooting so now you hold it down until you see the choices again and then wait a little bit hold it down and now you see the options so once again the same law apply it's not the efi that you're already on it change the efi that's it and then go into mac os ssd or macintosh hard drive and now you can remove the usb key because you're booting from the hard drive which is pretty cool it's going to be faster of course again for the five five the first five minutes is going to be slow but after it's going to work flawlessly so now you just enter your password again unplug the usb key and basically you can log in and it's like a new computer but it's not finished anymore again so i would go back into finder application and try to disable show boot picker so i would open again open core legacy packer patcher and here in the finder like i said application and open core legacy patcher just to make sure you follow up and you want to go to settings and you want to uh, like remove show boot picker and after you want to go to main menu and you want to build and install open core once again install to disk just to install the change and then you have only one choice your internal hard drive efi your password so you want to enter your password once again and then the computer will start up for one last time and you won't see all the choices when the computer will start it will start normally like a brand new supported max so that's it it's done the update is finished we're on mac os ventura it's working flawlessly i've tested it like i said on many computers and it's working flawlessly on everything so well if you want to do an update of course you want to do uh, with system settings and do it normally like a supported max and after the updates will be done you wait five minutes and if there is patches to be added via open core legacy patcher the application would start automatically and detect that every patches is not applied and you have to do some patches via the application but you can also check if every post install root patches uh, have been installed on the computer just to make sure that you have the optimal performance and the optimal experience so i'll go back into finder application and open core legacy page patcher and here if you go into post install root patches as you can see all applicable patches already installed so basically you have no more patch to to put on the computer so you have the optimal experience but if there is some to install of course you have to install it and finally i would uh, advise you to run an application which is called mac fan control uh, on your computer basically any max that's getting hold and has a tendency to run hot like your those patches mac works flawlessly but often they will run pretty hot so here you can write mac fan control on google and as you can see you can download this application via the crystal uh, the the uh, link and you want to download the application and install it and it's going to make your fan work faster so the computer will be cooler uh, all the time so as you can see if i go into my finder and applications here i have mac fan control because i've already downloaded it and then i go into here so i base the value on cpu core average and i put like start to 45 and max 99 because the max of intel cpu is 99 and here as you can see it will make the mac running cold so here 57 is pretty cool and the fan is running a bit faster it's not really loud but it's keeping the computer cold and working faster because it does not thermal throttle so that's it for this video thanks a lot don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and i'll make another video once the newer update will come out for 2008 to 2012 max thanks a lot ciao ciao